Hello, today is a special episode. We are in Karlskrona and we're going to go to the This is a two-man submarine. It was bought from Yugoslavia in the 1980s. I believe it was 1984. And it was used in the hunt for uh, foreign submarines that uh, violated Swedish waters. So two divers, fully equipped with diving equipment and uh, breathing compressed air, was able to pilot this vessel. And this submarine over here is the uh, Haien and it's one of the older Swedish subs and over here we have one of the newer it's Neptune and it's really really long as you can see so we're soon gonna go inside uh, Neptune to see what it's like to be inside one of these so now we're entering side of the Neptune and we're entering where the torpedoes are loaded into the torpedo tubes and it's also uh, a mess hall for uh, the crew it's built-in TV and VCR no flat screens here and uh, here we got the torpedo loading uh, apparatus which loads into the torpedo tubes right here and these are then pressurized and closed like the hatches right here and then the torpedoes are ready to fire now we got four loading systems as we can see two upper over here and two lower so all in all we have four torpedo tubes on uh, this uh, level and I also think there's uh, torpedo tubes above us. So if we look up here we can see probably some of the torpedo tubes. Yeah. You've never been inside a you both? Never, never. It's quite, it's quite, <laughs> quite uh, massive. Uh, it's not that tight that one would so think. Where they launch, uh, the torpedoes. torpedoes, yeah. They take the torpedoes on these rails and they're loaded because these can uh, be extended and uh, lifted. And then go, uh, the torpedo goes in there, they close the hatches, pressurize the tubes, and then they are ready to fire. <laughs> Next to the torpedo tubes we have a crew cabin and you can see the beds and uh, also the tables that's foldable but there's not very much room but it's enough and the crew normally sleep in uh, shifts and inside here we got the mess hall where they cook and we can see here here's what for dinner for uh, Saturday they had uh, oatmeal with the uh, cooked ham and for lunch they had pizza uh, and uh, for uh, dinner it was uh, tornidos Putu sauce. <laughs> I really don't know what that is, but it's French fries, uh, baked tomato, green salad, fruit salad, and uh, citrus cream. So it was quite luxury. Oh, 
blood pudding. I don't mm. like that, but bacon is good. Even though we don't eat... Uh, pretty uh, panna. Pretty panna. Uh -huh. So, this is how it looks now. Sadly, we can't uh, go in further inside, but... Yeah. What are you doing? I'm uh, launching some torpedoes here. <laughs> You have a thread, um, string attached torpedo. This is a thread uh, torpedo. It's uh, guided via the thread right here. And then we have the straight on torpedo. It's a lot harder to hit the target with. And then we have the self guided torpedo that actually finds the target itself and tries to demolish it. It might look funny that you have a standard wrench uh, as a display, but uh, the point is that uh, if you drop the wrench, it makes a lot of noise and it can be hear heard in the water via sonar for probably miles away. So this means that in the subs they have special submarine boots which are actually made to be able to walk very quietly. Because if there's an enemy ship close by, you can't make any sounds because they will pick you up instantly. And that means that sometimes when uh, you're in a combat situation, you weren't even allowed to flush the toilet. So if you had to take a dump, you will have to uh, be able to stand the stench for quite a while until you could escape from the threat above or other submarine. <laughs> hula hula. hula. <laughs> <laughs> it basically says uh, Caesar, and uh, that's probably the dog. Let me see if I can get better. And Sober is uh, sleeping, so. Uh, and uh, that's a uh, Nale, and that's ba basically a teddy bear. And. Uh, this is Paris Reza. What the hell is <laughs> Quintus Me Ku? <laughs> Quintus is uh, a name, and uh, Me is with, and Q is Q. So all of these are A, B, C, D, E, F. So uh, that's how you uh, go with Morse code. So we're still at uh, looking at the Neptune. And uh, it was uh, uh, first launched at 1972, I believe. And it's still pretty modern uh, state. But uh, look at the size of this propeller. It's really, really big. Melinda, can you st stand in front of the propeller so we can get a comparison? So, yeah. So if you're a diver and you're in the water and all of a sudden a big shadow approaches be sure to hold on tight to something because this one will create a big big vacuum in, uh, in the water and you don't want to be stuck in the propeller once it passes you. So I will uh, uh, show a video uh, or link to a video in the description where a diver is actually in the water when a cargo ship goes past. This is probably the most important thing. It's a toilet. It's hand operated. So when you've done your business and uh, there's no enemy combatant ships uh, around, then you start pulling this one uh, and uh, you have to uh, pump it to get the stuff inside the toilet to go away. Earlier we were uh, downstairs and uh, that torpedo hatch right there was the one that was open. So you can see it has four torpedo hatch downstairs and four torpedo hatch upstairs. So we're soon gonna go inside uh, at the top. But right now we can see the big uh, submarine tower 
and it's really, really, really big this one. Now we are at the top of the U-boat and we can see we have the other four torpedo hatches. And here we also have one of the torpedo. It's slightly bigger than the, the other one I showed you. Uh, and it have more of a punch also. So inside here goes the torpedo or the diver, the attack divers. And that's pretty really cool. Um, I would probably not want to do that. <laughs> And we can also see that wherever they had the opportunity, they crammed in uh, bunks so the crew could sleep. Also on this side there's also bunks, but they are folded up so you can walk here right now. So everything is covered with hatches and uh, storage space. Everything is tidied down like a wrench and this is crew cabinet no it's not it's uh, just storage also and here we have the legendary toilet the modern modern version at least I also think it's probably mm, no it's not a shower but yeah this is uh, emergency escape hatch More bunks, more bunks, and more um, more cabinets full of stuff like uh, medical equipment. And we have entered the uh, control room. So right here is where you uh, steer the Neptune. Press forward to dive. Backward to uh, ra race, and you can go left and right. And as Melinda just pointed out, there's no windshield. Instead, you have uh, gyro and uh, you have uh, a compass. So it's not much to uh, to look at. And behind me you have the periscope, but if you're deep down you can't do anything with the periscope at all. So this is the control room of the Neptune. Two chairs and a periscope. Not much more. And over here you have the sonar. Are you looking through the periscope? You can... You can uh, probably, uh, yeah, yeah. I can see outside. Oh. What, what do you see? I see trees and the sea. And the sea? And, Here you have the basic way of navigating. So this is uh, the Sjökot, uh, Sea Charter or Sea Map or whatever it's called in English. And you use the uh, speed of the sub to uh, calculate where you are and also sonar to not hit anything. And if you're in a just below the surface you can also use the periscopes. Let's see if we can see anything. So right here it's outside of the sub and if I turn around uh, let's see if we can find something. Down. Okay down. So let's look down. Oh here we go. Here we can see some trees and the ocean outside via the periscope. So the periscope goes up through the roof of the building and we can see outside. We can actually change the... Yeah, you can change the view so we can look 
round also and it's fully so this is the roof of the building and we can look around Cascona I think that's the I don't know what that is church maybe and you can go all around so this is the way to see what the enemy warships looks like or cargo ships and decide if it's a friendly ship or not uh, to be able to uh, uh, decide what kind of ship there is there's actually some books uh, it's probably a computer managed uh, in this sub but uh, you can see the uh, for the books there have silhouettes so if you can uh, if you can't decide what kind of ship it is you can always look at in the books and uh, see the silhouettes if, if it has two chimneys or whatever you can decide if it's a, a hostile ship or not so this is the radio room and uh, all the equipment for the radios and here we have a, a cabin and I would say that this is probably the captain's cabin and here is a watertight seal so uh, We'll have to crawl through. <laughs> Watch your head. Oh, so if we go straight up, we would be in the tower, I believe. You're not doing it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the crew that's uh, normally, they grab a hold of that one and they go with the feet first. Ah, they shoot them something. Yeah. <laughs> like some kind of mechanical uh, shop I really don't know what it is it's yeah this is the engine so we're in the back of the computer uh, computer of the submarine and this one is probably the main engine that spins the propeller so if you go further outside you will be in absolute back This is basically the engine uh, machinery room. I would imagine it gets very, very hot in here when once the uh, submarine is in operation. I would say this is in case of fire. Probably not a diving diving gear, but maybe it can be used that way, but mostly fire I would say. So and you can hear the sound. I like uh, that they are simulating everything. It's very loud. And we're outside again. So back outside. And all around the way uh, from the Neptune you can uh, look at the different subs that has been developed. So this is the sub uh, Aboran 2 uh, from 1962 and it goes back all the way to high end that was 1904 I believe. So 
it's quite uh, quite an impressive exhibition and this is just the part with the submarine exhibition there's actually a lot lot more here at marine museum but this is what i will show you and uh, it's quite impressive so if you have the chance please come and take a look at it even uh, though it's like crazy war stuff but it's still underwater and it's pretty cool so this is one of the more interesting places in uh, in the marine museum go till bottom it basically go to bottom so we're going downstairs to see what's beneath Marine Museum in Karlskrona and the fun part about this is that here is the water line so uh, surface of the water so right now we're beneath the water line and it's getting colder a lot colder and here you can see outside and we're actually below the water and this is an old wreck It's uh, from an uh, old ship built in the 1700s. It's on, uh, uh, let's see, what is it? Yeah, it has no name, but at least you can see the ship. So, uh, sometimes they send divers down below to clean the windows. Yeah, big ship. This is a simulation of how you uh, search the bottom of the ocean. You lay out a net and then you go through uh, the net one uh, frame by uh, frame. So this is how you uh, Look for stuff basically. So, this is pretty cool. One cool thing about Sweden is that uh, the Östersjö, Baltic Sea, uh, there's not a lot of uh, uh, ship worm, so it doesn't eat uh, the ships. So, we get to keep the ships around for a very very long time some shrimps a lot of shrimps actually <laughs> and that's cool because we can enjoy the shipwrecks a lot longer than you could in say Mediterranean Sea so this is where we leave you the show uh, looking at Marine Museum here in Karlskrona. Uh, please follow the links, I will post them uh, in the description of the video. And uh, thank you for watching, like and subscribe. So, see you around.